thank you, Mr. Uh, Gopal Swami, for joining us today. Uh, you've uh, served as the uh, Chief Election Commissioner of India, and uh, in that capacity, you also uh, looked at elections very closely, uh, which would have given you a deep understanding of the electoral system that uh, India is following, which is the first past the post. Um, so, um, which in which you know basically it is the seats that count and not the votes. Um, how much do you think this sort of electoral system has, uh, you know, played out in the past in our country? Um, for example, in last year's uh, Lok Sabha election, where the BJP got 31% uh, of the vote share, but just but about 63% of the seat share. So, how much do you think that nudges a party's win? Actually, the the real problem uh, in any system has its own problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, it seems to us an FTP uh, first past the post. Mm -hmm. The problem is that min uh, with the minority of votes or with less number of votes, you get more seats. Mm -hmm. now, that is, need not always be true. In the special circumstances in our country, this is the outcome. Mm -hmm. Why? See, the point is that the margins and the number of parties and contestants. Mm -hmm. It used to be a very small number to start with. Then slowly it rose, went up to uh, nearly 15, 16 in the mid 90s, number of contestants. Mm -hmm. Then there was a change, it came down drastically to eight because the deposit amount was increased. Thereafter again it has climbed and the last election, last two elections, mm -hmm. 2009 and 2014, the average contestant per average for the entire country is 15. One was 14.8 in 2009, it's 15.20. The uh, maximum contestants were 43. Mm -hmm. The minimum contestants were 3. In the 2009 election, the minimum contestants were 2, mm -hmm. which is necessary for us. Mm -hmm. And maximum was 42. The average in many constituencies is somewhere around 10 to 12, 15, 16. Okay. There is no um, there is no, you know, there is no, uh, if you want to start a party, there is nothing stopping you. A lot of other considerations take place. That is, whether <coughs> caste is one consideration, community is another consideration. Then, whether a person is capable of looking after all the, uh, I mean, whether, if, if he has done something good, yes, it also comes into form, but not necessarily the party. So many other factors come into play. So with this over a period of time, another parallel development is in Indian context is power gives you enormous access to resources. Mm. Okay. That is another temptation uh, to, mm. to reach a power. So aspiration has also gone up. Mm. So more and more political parties mm. are wanting to become uh, the, uh, I mean, take the reins apart. Mm. What they do with it is a different issue altogether. So much so, the at the ground level, uh, if you, if you, if, if in any particular constituency you have three equally powerful parties or contestant contesting, mm. only one can win, mm. right? And he can win with 32, 33 percent of the mm. votes. Then political party combinations also are important. Whom you join? Who are who are? Uh, so there are so many other factors are also involved in the whole thing. Given the circumstances of what we are doing, uh, the first pass post system. Inevitable that at this juncture, when the aspirations of a large number of people are uh, uh, there for getting to the bar, and very large number of uh, a fairly, you could say, 10 to 12 really powerful parties mm. are there. Not all in uh, one state. Every state the thing mm. changes, differs. Mm. Barring two, mm. uh, even though there are six national parties, mm. but only two national parties count. Mm. The others are also run. Mm. Okay. And, um, uh, some are national parties only in name just because they contest mm. in more than three, four states. Mm. 
but practically they don't they they drive their uh, derive their sustenance only from one or two states okay and um, and there are I mean, the, the inevitably this situation at this moment will lead to certain aberrations of this kind yeah. interestingly mm. uh, you take BSP mm. off the uh, off the cuff if I remember they got about 5.3 percent of votes in 2009 had uh, 2004 mm. had about 19 seats or so mm. and 6.17 uh, percent mm. in 2009 had 21 seats mm. and they had 4.17 percent in 2014 mm. and got zero seats. Okay. So, if you if you if you extrapolate mm. that, you know they they, they got uh, approximately for every percentage of votes polled, mm. they got uh, five seats mm. to start with, I mean, mm. uh, four seats to start with in 2004, mm. and uh, it came down to about f uh, four or so in 2009. Mm. It became zero. Okay. At <coughs> the same average, they should have got at least about 16 seats. Mm didn't happen mm. because there are now equally powerful forces contesting elections. Mm. So the threshold mm. has now gone up. At 4% you will not achieve anything. Mm. But if that same 4% had been obtained by you and you are one of the two powerful regional parties, for instance, mm. let's say that um, uh, in UP mm. there are only two parties, mm. SP and BSP. Mm. Whatever the percentage of votes they had, and if they had won, in the Indian context, that percentage would be very small. Mm -hmm. But the number of seats would be very high. Mm -hmm. I will take one example. Mm -hmm. Take ADMK. Mm -hmm. ADMK had something like 40% of votes poured along with mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, another party with whom they joined, who, who must have brought some votes for them. They had almost about 45 percent of the votes, mm. and they had 37 out of 39 seats. Mm. But if you look at their total votes mm. in the Indian context, mm. it is 3 point some percentage. At 4 percent, mm. BSP drew a blank. Mm. At 3 percent, uh, this party had 37 seats. Mm. Mm. So, from this, another lesson. The more regional parties, mm -hmm. the dangerous lesson, mm -hmm. the more powerful regional parties, mm -hmm. you can have a situation where India will be, um, at the parliament level, there will be regional parties ruling. Mm -hmm. Same case, you take um, uh, the three regional parties which have done well, mm -hmm. Trinamool Congress, BJD and ADMK, yeah. mm -hmm. at the cost of the national parties. Mm -hmm. So, this, uh, you know, the, the uh, first pass post system mm -hmm. has some uh, problem, mm -hmm. but it also brings surprises. Yeah. With 3%, mm -hmm. you have 34% or mm -hmm. uh, 37 seats, mm -hmm. which is a fair percentage. I mean, 37 seats out of uh, 543 is yeah. over uh, almost 10% of the seats. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the second largest uh, party. So it has it has got some plus and minus yeah. also. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So um, so moving on, like you mentioned, how India is now it's got more like a multi-party uh, you know political scenario. So um, we're still adopting this first past the post. So um, why is it many people would consider this sort of electoral system to be unfit for such a scenario? You know, a lot of political parties and regional parties in the forum. So why is it that we are not considering moving towards like proportional representation or? So what, what is the purpose behind mm -hmm. uh, uh, an election being conducted? Mm -hmm. Is to ensure that somebody comes and takes the reins of power and conducts the affairs of the state. Mm -hmm. Assume, mm -hmm. for, all uh, for all purposes, it is assumed that mm -hmm. anybody who takes the reins of power mm -hmm. does so for the benefit of the people. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> now, imagine a situation mm -hmm. as in India, mm -hmm. multi uh, uh, parties mm -hmm. contesting. Yeah. You shift over to mm -hmm. the uh, uh, you know proportional representation. Mm -hmm. The chaos will increase. 
so the purpose of election is not just to conduct an election to say that you are a democracy mm. the purpose of an election is also to ensure that you get uh, a government which can govern mm. okay. so you cannot i mean you 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 one cannot wish away that in mm. fact in um, as early as 1971 72 mm. the chief election commissioner there at the time there used to be only one chief election mm. commissioner and nobody else mm. so he gave a report must be at the uh, on 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 being suggested saying that look at various other systems mm. he gave a report in which uh, he favored the um, the uh, first past post system mm. saying that in the indian context applying that other one mm. you will get one uh you know uh, multiplicity of parties of the governance make mm. governance difficult mm. then coalitions would be there mm. which may become unstable mm. and lead to frequent elections mm. then uh, there's one disadvantage with 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 the list system mm. this system the party bosses become very powerful mm. because they it is they who will decide mm. who will be uh, in the list mm. okay and finally he also pointed out as to how uh, you know th th there will be no direct correlation between the member of parliament and his constituents mm -hmm. people might they, in a in a developing uh, country scenario people look up to a leader mm -hmm. and uh, whatever hap i mean whatever whatever uh, whosoever is the is a member of parliament a person who has got a group of people who got a problem in a particular uh, constituency mm. with the uh, first thing can we go to the mla can mm. we go to the mp mm. or can we go to the corporate yeah. hardly they will be saying can we go to the chief secretary of the government mm. can we go to the home secretary of the government or somebody else yeah. so naturally which is a good thing mm. is a good thing that is democracy where you believe mm. that uh, you have a grievance or a problem uh, it is a representative of the people who must solve it or who must be approached to solve it so that nexus if it is broken hmm. that's also not good right okay uh, moving on um, so the election commission sets these limits on uh, the expenditure and campaign finance and fund raising capabilities of parties so um, because of these limits to an extent like parties are you know uh, seek uh, money or uh, from Uh, people who have access to like black money as such so somehow you know black money seeps into this whole uh, system because of the gaps that exist so what are um, your thoughts on uh, you know campaign finance and election expenditure limits i think first thing is uh, if we identify a problem wrongly mm -hmm. then the solution will be wrong okay so uh, it is not the election which generates black money mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. black money is generated right and used in election yeah. mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. you also mentioned that it seeps in yeah now if the uh, uh, why mm -hmm. because unfortunately we have built a system mm -hmm. where transparency is at a discount mm -hmm. okay why second our judicial process are very slow and uh, not withstanding the fact we regularly conduct elections mm. still people have not identified directly saying that this person has done good for us therefore we'll vote for him mm. so many other considerations also involved caste community then um, so many others mm. so much so a parliamentarians uh, you know re-election does not necessarily depend upon whether he has done something mm. uh, great mm. or something very good mm. for the constituency or for the country mm. okay. so there is i mean there is no direct nexus is mm. possible mm. therefore what happens is the the uh, persons who are aspiring to reach power are now reaching power not for the, not necessarily for the sake of doing something mm. large for the larger good not necessarily i am not saying everybody is like that but definitely enough evidence exists mm -hmm. to show that many of them are there for also a grand aspect mm -hmm. to enrich themselves mm -hmm. okay so this is something and this 
it's not necessarily only those who are uh, you know ministers or it's like that at every level at every level whether you know member of parliament member the chances that you can aggrandize without being easily detected or without being brought to book the more the chances are there then the temptation definitely is much higher okay therefore this is almost becoming an investment with you know enormous returns and therefore you would like to invest and if the returns are uh, you know such huge returns are going to be possible then any investment is worthwhile therefore you don't confine yourself to the limits which are there because in your anxiety to see that you maximize your your uh, you know uh, votes you go any lengths and it is not as though others are uh, immune to it when a part, when, when a when a candidate is trying to do this there are enough number of people who are trying to take advantage of it okay not only his party cutters but you see media there are enough cases of uh, you know cases of uh, uh, payment to the media etc etc and there are some cases which came up and all that stuff and uh, i i know for a fact that um, in some places three rates used to be there for uh, newspapers one which will just run. you pay some money mm-hmm. and they it will it will they will write about you mm-hmm. you pay a little more which i don't know what is the uh, number of times mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. they will write about you and uh, not about the your rival okay. mm-hmm. then you pay maybe 10x mm-hmm. or 20x god mm-hmm. knows what then they will write about you and they will you know demean your opponent so the graded scale yeah. i remember in 2007 mm-hmm. in one of the constituencies in up uh, a leader of the political party came to me and said his candidate is being asked to pay mm-hmm. by a local newspaper mm-hmm. saying that now that the commission has saved for you mm-hmm. a lot of expenditure by way of you know the the um, posters and there is mm-hmm. that another you need not spend mm-hmm. you are going to save a lot of money yeah. so why not share it with me mm. so we will write about you but we will write only if you pay this much mm. so what you then i remember in uh, the mp election um, uh, afterwards in the same uh, uh, 2000 this is in 2009 um or 2008 uh, sorry 2008 uh, november december mm. <coughs> communist party of india complained saying that he is a candidate in gwalior somewhere he is a candidate but the local blue papers don't write even a line about him mm-hmm. because he can't pay he won't pay mm-hmm. so it is not uh, why was the ceiling put mm-hmm. now if you go back and see we have ourselves you know we we have uh, some other criteria also mm-hmm. in our playing in our mind mm-hmm. saying that we are a democracy therefore we should at least on paper say everybody is equal mm-hmm. yeah mm. and if you raise the uh, expenditure mm. limit mm. immediately you know your conscience pricks you i mean if you have a conscience yeah. saying that how can a person um, a normal person mm. can I mean, how can a poor person as mm. though poor persons are dying to contest elections mm. the fact is that you have that consideration also in fact the uh, in one of the supreme court judgments um, early 50s or so a man or 60s there's a mention saying that you know um, uh, the 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 uh, it should be open to all to contest that's a true democracy is where uh, anybody who desires to contest has the qualification mm. to be able to contest mm. and therefore with that particular thought every time the matter goes before the commission saying that um, you fix a ceiling they fix a particular ceiling mm. but if the parliamentarians are unhappy with it mm. they make the decision commission only is recommendatory authority and commission's recommendation is not mandatory mm. they could be to raise the ceiling to 5 crores and crores they are also bitten by the same you can call it uh, you know socialistic bug or whatever bug it is yeah. so they wouldn't be seen mm. they wouldn't like to be seen as uh, being pro um, big money mm-hmm. 
so they also uh, uh, you know uh, become part of the mm -hmm. sharat mm -hmm. okay in fact um, it is uh, comment is attributed to the then uh, prime minister mr vajpay he is supposed to have said mm -hmm. uh, this here say mm -hmm. uh, that all of us enter mm -hmm. the portals of this um, uh, you know uh, this uh, august office and mm -hmm. sacred place after uttering a lie and what is that lie that all of us have lied that we have adhered to the expenditure limits and spent only yeah. uh, not beyond that hmm. expenditure limit hmm. is supposed to have said that some true yeah. so so the, the the issue is not very simple hmm. yes you can easily remove the ceiling hmm. but are we mentally prepared hmm. to to let go or invite that criticism hmm. that you are pro big money um in the past you've raised concerns about um candidates with criminal records contesting elections what are your thoughts on the current laws that exist and what can be done with this regard See, what can be done is fairly clear <laughs> okay now there are certain good things that happened in the sense that you know earlier a parliamentarian convicted during the term of his mm -hmm. office convicted mm -hmm. of a, an offense mm. for which um, uh, which disqualifies him from okay. uh, being a member mm. he could continue until the appeal is decided mm. now the supreme court in the last uh, one of the last judgments here before last mm. they have said that immediately you will lose mm. the seat yeah and that is mm. taken uh, taken mm. effect now and people will not yeah. lose seats <coughs> but the suggestion mm -hmm. that people with heinous crimes mm -hmm. you know charge sheet yeah. should be not allowed to contest mm -hmm. is not being accepted okay mm -hmm. and the and the, the parliament is not being uh, i mean it, it it the suggestion i believe was sent by the law ministry to uh, parliamentary committee parliamentary mm -hmm. committee didn't find it mm -hmm. acceptable mm -hmm. but to my mind that's the only way mm -hmm. because now from around 15 or 16 percent mm. of MPs with uh, uh, with criminal case against them, mm. the last uh, the last Lok Sabha, I mean, the, the current Lok Sabha, it has reached almost 35 percent or so, mm. and 25 um, uh, percent are almost having heinous case uh, mm. case against. Heinous means you know uh, any any offence for which the um, the punishment is five years or more. Okay. Therefore, commission had suggested as early as 1998. Mm. that uh, people who been charged sheet mm. for um, heinous offences where the punishment is 5 years or more mm. uh, should be uh, disqualified mm. that has not been accepted mm. i think that's that yes. it has got to be taken very seriously and uh, yes. okay um finally um, could you tell us about your experience with the uh, fame and how you came to be a part of it and what was your role when uh, when i retired and i mm -hmm. i knew that um, uh, the previous uh, chief election commissioner mr lindo uh, and mr t s krishnamurthy mm -hmm. uh, they had started a small group um, along with mr k g rao etc yeah. uh, which um, was willing to share the uh, you know uh, built up experience mm -hmm. of all the commissioners and yeah. the commission uh, officials mm -hmm. etc and um, we were uh, Uh, we were offering our services to conduct mm -hmm. elections or you know uh, advice on procedures etc mm -hmm. etc et and um, we found um, uh, some day somewhere we did conduct elections for some bodies mm -hmm. okay uh, the lawyers mm -hmm. uh, forum now but our first big break came mm -hmm. when the congress party uh, under mr rao um, and uh, the instruction of rahul gandhi decided that the youth congress um, mm -hmm. uh, elections will be done mm -hmm. uh in in a, in a manner which um, uh, which would uh, be free and fair uh, or in in a in a more uh, in, a, in a better way yeah. so um, we did that election mm. in bihar in punjab and in tamil nadu mm. but um, possibly uh, the repercussions uh, uh, which uh, it threw out mm. were such that the party then banned I mean, It, it didn't go further with uh, with that particular okay. thing. So, as consultants, we generated some funds, and uh, we um, after the 
the Sachin initial success, we were not. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have, though of course, we have offered to mm -hmm. all the political parties that we we have this expertise, yeah. we can we can conduct inter internal yeah. party elections right. for them. Right. Uh, we have not been very successful mm -hmm. in that. Uh, apart from that, we have conducted, um, uh, you know, at the behest of some institution in um, uh, UK, mm -hmm. uh, Cambridge Group. Mm -hmm. We conducted the, we, we organized mm -hmm. for uh, the uh, meeting of all the CEOs, uh, CECs of all Commonwealth countries okay. in, uh, in India. That was one thing done here. Occasionally, we, we uh, also uh, depending upon our strengths, mm -hmm. I, I am available in Chennai, somebody is in Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that area we, we conduct some work with the, during the, just before the elections, mm -hmm. um, going and talking to uh, people to enroll themselves mm -hmm. or you know, bringing out uh, issues related mm -hmm. to elections. Okay, alright, thank you.